everyone in this video we're going to talk about some of the more tricky aspects of building applications in particular some back-end features that are actually quite difficult to implement yourself so if you have for example a full stack next.js application you basically have a very fast request response cycle so from the client from the browser you may request a different page which is just a server component and it's all been engineered to respond as fast as possible right so this request response cycle typically only takes you know, a few seconds at most. Now this can become a little bit tricky if you have a task that takes a bit longer. For example, some time ago I was building a video rendering software. So rendering a video can take like 20, 30 minutes in, in some cases. So in that case, you know, the result of that cannot be returned immediately to the browser. So that's something that has to keep running in the background. And you may also be making API calls to AI models. If you're using the latest AI models, that, that can also take uh, multiple minutes. So with those types of tasks, you very quickly start to think about having a separate server. If you've ever built something a little bit more sophisticated with Next.js, you know that at some point you're like, oh, should I add another server here as a separate server? So then you can hand off that task to that separate server and that can keep running in the background and then if there's a result you can continue at that point right? and that's also because we're often hosting next.js in a serverless manner so there is no long-running server in the background there's just a bunch of serverless functions being spun up on demand basically and then when they're finished they are spun down again so typically you don't have a long-running server that you can just hand those longer running tasks off to so you've probably already wondered do i need a separate server where i can hand off my sort of background jobs maybe even create a queuing system or cron jobs right so basically something you want to do every hour for example or every day once a day and that, that also is something that does not really fit in nicely in this request response cycle but of course in a more sophisticated application these are still very common things that you will need so technically we could spin up this separate backend ourselves but actually there are some products out there these days that can help you with that and actually in this video i want to talk about what i believe is a really uh, promising option and they were actually part of this personnel open source program and i'm talking about Moshe. So they are also today's sponsor, but I had a great time using them and they can really help out with this pretty gnarly issue without us having to create a complete backend from scratch ourselves. Instead, Moshe already offers a lot of those things that we're going to need out of the box, like an API endpoint. So you can actually submit data, sort of trigger a particular workflow, and then you can run your background job. So basically, the idea here is that if you have a long running task, for example, let's say we're building a translator app. So the user can write some text and I want to translate this into some other language. So I'm going to use AI for this. That's something that I want to sort of schedule in a background uh, job. So I will need some kind of API endpoint to that workflow. And then maybe I want to detect the current language that the user submitted and then actually translate it into the target language in this case i'm going to use an ai model for this to actually translate and then of course we get a result and that result how do you deal with that ideally what i can do is i can stream it immediately to the client gets updated and sees the result as as fast as we can show it of course that's ideal so this is the ideal so this is something we can set up with moshe very easily before i show you the code i quickly want to spin up that back end and we can split up that workflow in steps. So what I just showed you here are basically steps. Just like in a React application, you split up the UI in component. With Moshe, you have a backend and you have a workflow and you split it up in steps. So the API endpoint is a step, then detecting a current language is a step, and then we have another step here. So just to show you this, if I have hello everyone, I can translate it into Spanish here and let's just see what happens. So you can see it's translating now. And of course I get a very fast response. I also have some progress indicator here. And so we get a great result here, actually really good UX. And I'm using a background job here and then I'm actually streaming it into the UI here. And this was not a hassle to set up at all. This was actually really easy. If I make it uh, Portuguese, we can see a very similar result that is also a very good UX, okay? so. Let's, let me show you how to set this up here. So I will also link the code. So if you want to take a look at it yourself. So here we have the actual markup, right? So just a simple H1. Let me show you that here on the page. So we just have this H1 and then we have this form essentially. So we have a form here with some input and the user can type the text and the target language, okay? This is all 
pretty straightforward uh, markup here and ultimately the user is going to submit this okay so on submit we're going to grab the data from the form and we're going to submit that from the browser right at this point we're still in the client side so we have to submit it to the server side it's going to be the next.js app server side so we're still inside our next.js app we're going to send that to our own api endpoint first where we start the translation okay so the data is going to go to this uh, route handler here it's going to grab the data from here and now we are on our server side, right? So in the diagram here, the data has now been sent to the Next.js server side. And so this workflow of translating, this is something we want to run in the background, right? So at this point, I'm going to hand it off to a separate backend here. And we don't have to do a lot of work. I'm just sending it over to where Mosha is running. So Mosha is going to be also an app that we can run. So you may have your Next.js app running in one terminal here, and then I can run Mosha. So I can just say npx Mosha dev. It will spin up a dev server here for Mosha. And you can see that is running on port 3000. Okay, so let's actually open that up. All right, so here we see the Mosha workbench. With Mosha, we can split up that workflow in steps. And th those steps are then visually displayed here in a really nice canvas here. And how does it know those steps? Let's actually take a look at the Mosha code here, right? So now the data is going from my Next.js app to Mosha. Right, so and the way Mosha, you just split up your workflow in steps. So you have a folder here for steps and then you just have different files with step in them and that's how Mosha detects it as a step. So to send it over, it needs an API endpoint, right? So the first step is very commonly going to be an API step here. So I, I call it start translation API step. Now, the, it's basically a function here to have a certain structure. It's very well described in the documentation, but also they help your AI agent as well a lot as well so if you're using cursor they actually the motion app actually comes with a set of cursor rules they also have an lms.txt on their docs so it's very easy for your agent to uh, set this up as, but basically the Mosha app will then get the actual text to be translated and the target language. Now it does something with stream here. We'll get back to that in a second. That's how it can basically stream it into the UI. This is just sort of kicking off the workflow. So what it's gonna do now is emit an event, right? So it becomes an event-driven workflow. So there are other steps that will subscribe to this event or particularly the topic. It's going to emit an event, translation.detect, and it's gonna pass along some data, right? That's all it does here. So then the next step, would be to actually detect the language, the current language perhaps, right? So here we are getting that data from that from that emission. I'm using a package here to programmatically uh, detect the language because maybe we wanna store that in our database, for example. We just wanna keep track of the translations. It's just an example. So it's going to actually also do something here with the stream. Basically it's going to, the progress indicator can then update to show the user in what stage the translation workflow is. We, and we may do other things here, like actually store it in our database, but ultimately we wanna keep going. So we're gonna emit another event with the data here. So this is going to be the actual translation step in this case, it's gonna be here. Right, so an event was emitted by the previous step and we can hook into that here because we can say it should su subscribe to that particular event, right? That's how they are chained together. It will get a particular inf input, right? So this is all configured there and then you just have a function essentially. So we're just going to update the, the progress indicator we'll talk about in a second. But then I'm actually gonna make the OpenAI call. So I added the OpenAI key here and we're just gonna send along a prompt here. Of course, I could use a more uh, better model, but uh, this will do for now and ultimately it's going to get a result right and we can actually make it so that it will stream to the ui which is pretty this is not easy to implement with a back with a separate backend application this would have been a lot of work ourselves but uh, actually it is generally a good developer experience here so you can see here right as it gets the result from the ai model we can then immediately update the streaming to the UI as well, which is really, really nice. So this is the last step. You can see at this point, after it gets the result, it does not emit some other event, right? That's how it's structured here. And now the result of this is I can have a bunch of text. Let's actually just copy a bunch of things here from Wikipedia. I will just paste it in here and let's actually translate it to French. I will translate here and let's actually try French this time and let's see what we get. All right, so now you can see I'm getting this status update and here we are actually getting the result streamed in. And of course, if we have a lot of users, they can uh, submit essentially all of these requests and we can hand it off to Mosha, but we still get, but we can still get this amazing UI experience here on the front end as well without having to 
to do polling ourselves. So basically once it has finished with those steps, it's going to stream it in. Before I show you the streaming part, here in the workbench, you can see visually the steps, right? So it starts off with an API endpoint. If I click on this here, you can actually see the code for that particular step as well. And then it emits an event. So then the next step, they subscribe to that event. So they will get triggered and it will run. You can see the code here. Ultimately, the last step here that we have is the actual translation step and we can see all the code here. And then you also get great observability here. So here you can see each run of that workflow is also traced here. So you can see the first two steps were really fast, of course. And it was this translate text step that well, took a bit longer, of course, because we have to actually go out and make a call to an AI model. Some information about that here as well. We do, If you quickly want to try out your workflow, you do not have to trigger it from your code. You can actually go here and you can manually call that API endpoint here as well, just to try it out, for example. So it will go through those steps and ultimately we want to stream the result back to the UI. So here in steps, I actually have one more thing, which is, so here actually for streaming, we have the option here to add a stream.ts file. And you basically configure here what should be part of the stream, what kind of data should be part of that. And then they actually provide some React components. So they actually have a Motion stream provider component. So we can use a WebSocket here, and then we include that provider, of course, in our React tree. And then within there on the page, we can use this hook, the use stream item hook from their React package. And that's what will basically give us that data as we are updating that data during the workflow and calling that and uh, basically adding to that stream. It's then being consumed here from our React front end. So here at the bottom, we can uh, show that result essentially. Right, that's how it's all configured here. So now you can get a pretty sophisticated setup, which was really a lot of pain before, because even if you would set up your own backend application before, at some point you would get a result from your uh, workflow or background job. So typically what you would do from that point is maybe add it to your database, right? So you would have a database here somewhere. But of course, you also want to show the result in the client. So then you had to do some awkward uh, polling here. So maybe even triggered from the client and then the server in turn will check the database. It's, is it ready yet? No, it's not ready yet. No, it's not ready yet. And then you do that a couple of times. So it was really a lot of engineering basically just to get even simple results back into the client. So I really like that Moshe also offers this streaming option so you can directly show the results in your UI. That's just something I quickly wanted to show you that uh, I think it's a really interesting problem actually really happy to see companies go after this space and I think Moshe fits in really well with this Next.js stack. So I would say check them out you can find a link in the description. Hope this helps you out with building your applications. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.